um, I want to be, you know, I want to be financially th- free in three years. And especially right now, perhaps the, the, that pause should be learning everything about the game uh, and, and trying deals on. Well, what if I would have bought this? What would have happened? Welcome to the Small Steps Big Wins podcast, where I'm dedicated to helping you take control of your life. I'm glad you're here, Tim. I really am. I was really looking forward to this conversation because you just have a knack of bringing depth to things that have simplicity. So I'm looking forward to our conversation. Sweet. Well, I hope that yeah. I hope it helps your listeners and uh, happy to be here. So. I do too. I do too. Well, for anybody who doesn't know who Tim is, and you can feel free to add when I'm done here, you're one of the founding members of GoBundance. You're co-author of the book, The Quitter's Manifesto, which was phenomenal, by the way. I read that from the back. Uh, you're a real estate investor, father, husband, man of the woods, and you retired at 40. So I'm sure I missed something in there, but that's what I grabbed. Dad. Miss Dad. That? Dad of uh, three kids. Dad, Dad yeah. of three kids. Did I say father? Yeah. I had it on my list. Oh, you I probably did. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You probably did. It, it, okay. It's probably user error on my part, but I do have three grown kids. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. That is that I do too. By the way, it's nice when they're out of the nest, isn't it? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the part of parenting, isn't it? You train them to leave the nest, not to come back. Yeah. And to be um, happy, healthy, and basically keep taking care of themselves. That's, yes. Yeah. That's totally right. Good. Leave that nest and not come back. Except when they bring grandkids, if you have grandkids in the mix. That's yeah. that's the fun part because then they come in and then you can just send them back. You know, that's you right. give them all the candy and sugar that they can eat and then you send them back to the parents. That's the best part of being a grandparent. I'm not there yet. I just know it because that's what my parents used to do to me when I brought my kids to go see them. So, <laughs> um, so let's start. I, I know at one point you shared your story and like you of growing up and working in your twenties and I found it really inspiring for me. Would you mind just sharing a little bit of like where you started and some of the little bit of that journey? Sure. Um, I, I feel like I've got come first full circle. I live in the town where I grew up. Um, it was it was an ideal childhood. I, I've, you know, if anybody knows me, my tagline is "Get the goods in the woods," and I grew up um, loving to be out in nature and to just play. And I don't think I ever lost that childlike nature. So uh, things were great until my parents split up when I was twelve, and in my line, things went awry right then. And uh, kind of lost myself, you know, just trying to figure stuff out. As a teen, I moved back and forth. I went to four high schools in four years. I lived with my aunt and uncle my senior year of high school. Um, Barely graduated high school, never went to college. And at 25, I was a part-time grocery clerk painting addresses on people's curbs to buy diapers for my then t- uh, small kids, two small kids. And uh, yeah, so then I found my niche selling real estate about 26. I got out. Pause, I don't mean to interrupt you, but pause right there. From 24 to 26, you went from painting curbs to real estate. Capture that in there. How did you get from there to real estate? Yeah, um, well, actually from let's say 18 to 25, I was a grocery clerk, but I wasn't getting enough hours or maybe I wanted more. Um, so I was doing a side hustle of at $6 a pop, pop, we would put paint the address on your curb. So yeah, um, so it was kind of like a side hustle on the side. My mom was in real estate. She paid for my license at 18. I didn't pass. My dad paid for it at 21. I did not pass. Um, I paid for it, <laughs> uh, working night crew, you know, uh, at all the reasons not to pass it this time, but I, I bet I got about a 98 on it. 
And, and so I started um, listing and selling real estate and whatever I do, I freaking do. That's one thing I've, I've noticed about myself. Um, so I got into it and just kicked butt from day one. And I also started investing at a, at a really young age. I had no idea. I, I've always loved to make money and I've always been really good at making money, but look at my t-shirt. Oh, that's like abundance t-shirt, but um, I just have no want for really um, material things, okay? So I always loved the game of real estate and I was really good at listing and selling. I was really good at investing so at 26, I was kind of a bro broke grocery clerk. And at 40, I tapped out and quit listing and selling. And, uh, and, and then I just became my best customer and, and only mm -hmm. invested in real estate from then on. And I've had a game ever since I was 40. Um, the same game I played in high school. I wanted to see if I could um, graduate high school and never take a book home. And I and at 40, I decided I want to graduate life and never work again. What did you graduate into then? Like if you graduated at 40, so you built your real estate portfolio between what, 26 and 40? Yeah, I, I, I had, when I tapped out and moved up to the mountains in my mid 40s, I had 17 rentals with 52 tenants. And I sold all of that down there, bought our dream home here with this amazing view. You can see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, and that was kind of Tina's and my goal was to go from where we were living and neither of us wanted to be there to move to the mountains. And, and I wanted to have an inspiring place with an inspiring view where just being there was just amazing. I wanted to have some kind of um, career where a lot of money was coming in and I, I was out doing cool things with cool people and uh, that was Go Abundance. And I, and I also wanted to be charitable and I started a nonprofit called One Life Fully Lived that I put about 12 years of my life into. And I wanted to spend a lot of time with uh, family. And so, and, and all of my family lives in Reno, Nevada within an hour. So, um, so I kind of had a vision, um, you know, uh, in the, my late thirties, I'd written out my dream. I'd be living in the mountains with an amazing view, financially free, doing something cool, being charitable, surrounded by family. And, and I noticed I don't care about anything else. Those are my it's. And, and I don't get lost. I don't care about material things. I don't care about, um, I don't get lost in crap that doesn't, the minutia that isn't part of the things that really matter to me. So I'm, so I'm really on point about what I love to do and I can't be swayed into things that do nothing for me. So, yeah. So I really lived that way. I'm 63 now. I've lived that, that for 23 years. It's kind of weird because I've been, you know, retired for, in my mind, um, just, just enjoying, you know, and the, and the biggest challenge I have now is finding others to do that with. I was going to ask you, what's one of the biggest challenges? Climb the mountains. I climbed a mountain and skied it right, you know, 20 minutes from my house and, uh, Everybody's freaking working. Uh, when you retired at 40, like, did you, like, what was the turning point for you? Did you just turn 40 and go like, I've got enough now. I'm done with all this stuff, sell it all off. And did you kind of take the foot off the gas or did you kind of roll into something else? Um, well, you have the quitters manifesto in the back. Ground. I do. We're, we'll get to that. That kind of played a lot. You know, that, that book is about, um, helping others with their journey. And that was my journey. About 35, I decided, boy, I'm sick of listing and selling real estate. And it took five, five more years before I got the, the just, I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And uh, I was in Belize scuba diving 
And I looked up and the, and for the first time in my life, I had this conversation in my head of, uh, I am so proud of you. You're financially free. You have more money coming in than what it's costing you to live. Um, a, I'm so proud of you. And it was the first time my, the, the, um, what the, the hard ass in my brain would say, dude, I'm proud of you. Lighten up because up until that point, it was really tough. You know, show me something, show me something, get on the phones, make that things happen. Just really tough on myself. So I'm in Belize. I'm, I'm like, you know, scuba diving and I'm thinking, I'm so proud of you. What's next? And I, and I literally said, I want you to go home and I want you to never list a home again. I'm like, Whoa. Well, what are you going to do? I said, well, you just flipped a home and you made 35 grand. What if you, 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 you're your own best customer. And I had three assistants at the time and literally wrote a plan out on the plane home and said, we are never listing another home for sale. We are, I had a, a list of like um, 2,500 prospects and I just flipped the switch to, um, I want to list and sell your home to, I want to buy your home. And, and, and I, and I had a, I had like a, um, you know, prospecting sources. It used to be, where will you get your listings? Then it will be, then it was, where will you find your deals? So, and I also told myself, I used to work 40 to 60 hours a week and it was like, screw that. You're not working anymore. You have this team. They can do all the work. You're just going to go get the goods in the woods. You're going to ski in the winter. You're going to go to the ocean. You're going to hike. You're going to, you're going to go just spend all your time in the boonies and you're going to work one or two days a month and then have them. Like I always had like six projects going, um, you know, two getting fixed up, three on the market, two in escrow. And I'm, I, you know, but but you get the drift. Um, so 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 it's kind of like I I'd be I'd 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 um, buy and sell ten to twelve homes a month, which I did for the next seven years in in the area before I moved, and um, and was making forty thousand per home. So I was making four hundred grand working a, a month or two, a day or two a month. Oh wow! And then I. Um, I started coaching other investors for a company called foreclosures.com. I was doing that a little bit on the side, making 250 an hour, um, sitting in my hot tub, looking at that amazing view, talking real estate or walking around my property, talking real estate. So, so everything I've done, I, I just want to get this point in before I lose it. Everything I've done since I quote retired has been elf, easy, lucrative, fun. And yeah, and I'll never, you know, I've, it's been 23 years. There's no way. Um, now I don't, I don't do anything and I don't want to do any. I love it. Elf, easy, lucrative, and fun. I think that's the, isn't that though, like you, when you retire, the, the best is actually not to retire, but just to do something that is easy, lucrative, and fun. And it's just, it's not like a job anymore, right? Until it wasn't. The, the listing and selling. And then, and then there was the, you know, for the next seven years, I did singles and doubles or in Kiyosaki's um, small deals versus big deals. If you played Kiyosaki's cash flow game. I mean, um, so, um, yeah, so so that's what I did down in the valley. And then I sold everything right into the top of the market in 2007, those 17 rentals with 52 tenants, um, cashed out, paid too much to build this house, um, bought uh, real world. Um, and and then um, we, we I bought like a building lease to AutoZone. I bought a, a strip center with, with eight tenants. And I, I, I had easier stuff coming in that, that was, yeah, simpler to manage. And, uh, yeah. So, and one, I want to say one other thing, if there's anybody contemplating this lifestyle and thinking, you know, you're 35, 40, 45, 50, 60, um, and you're still active, you gotta be, you gotta do stuff to occupy your mind. 
At 40, I tried to just ski 100 days. I tried to go to the ocean and go abalone diving and, and spear fishing and stuff. All this stuff that's great fun, but, but um, I found the, the quote, you can't have cake for breakfast every day is really important because you just got to do things to keep your mind occupied and, and to have a little stress. You know, I think it's good for you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that little bit of the, the little bit of stress, the other thought, <laughs> the other saying I was thinking of, if you eat too much lobster, it tastes like soap. No, but I can imagine. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Yeah, it's the same concept. Yeah. And you know what, while you were talking, I thought about it. It's the same is true. Like when you retire, well, okay, let's go back a minute to quitting your job, which a lot of people that seems, you know, a lot of people are in that boat where they want to do that. And one of the points in the book was that you don't just quit to quit. You got to go into something. You have to have a little bit of a plan. You have to have this roadmap and your book does a great job by the way, of just practically laying out here, are the, the things that you you need to put in place before you quit your job. Make sure you've got these components here. I, I got to be honest with you. I didn't. I, I went through a period. My mom called it, Timothy, when are you going to stop this walking in the woods phase? Yeah. And, and go bonus. Like I retired, you know, in 2000, let's say 2005, 2007. And go bonus didn't come around till 2012. One life didn't come around till the same time. So there was like a five to seven year period where I coached some real estate investors and I was, I was doing some things to occupy, but I was really um, on a plateau, um, just taking, um, just observing, just kind of seeing what's next. And, and, I'm really glad I did that. And I'm gl glad I didn't settle for the, the next big, you know, um, small thing. Gobundance is big. One life was big. And, and those were, um, they took time to gestate, if you will. That makes sense. I want you, will you talk about the birth of Gobundance and how that kind of came about? Because you're one of the founding members. Yes, you, uh, David Osborne, Pat Hyben. And yeah, Mike McCarthy. Yeah. So um, we're an un overnight success <laughs> that started in 1997. And that's when David Osborne and Pat Hyben met through, through a common mentor called Dr. Fred Gross, G-R-O-S-S-E. He wrote an amazing book called Black Belt of the Mind. And he is kind of like the grandfather of GoBundance, Emerge, um, One Life Fully Lived, this whole ecosystem that is now amazing with thousand, over a thousand total members. Um, they started as a two man mastermind in 97 and then they met me in 2004. And they said, when they met me, they said, Tim, what do you do? And I said, I ski. They, they, and, and at the time they would text each other every day. I worked 17. Ha ha. I worked 18. I got you. So I went, I met Pat. I went for a run with him. He said, Tim, tell me about me. What do you do? I said, well, I just ski. What do you mean? You, you work, work, right? And I go, no, not really. I get the goods in the woods every day. It's what I do. I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm selling off these 17 properties. I was just getting ready to sell of those to move to the boonies. And that's why I went to the conference that I went to that I met Pat at. So we became a three man mastermind group, um, called the three amigos. And we, and it was a adventure abundance and accountability. I was adventure, David was abundance and Pat was accountability. And what's so funny is that was the building blocks for GoBundance. We were, we were all being totally true to ourselves. And I'd love to tell you, we were all flying in formation with this amazing idea and we were going to build this big business. Hell no. It had nothing to do with any of that. We all just wanted what we wanted. I wanted adventure. David wanted abundance. And Pat said, you guys better be accountable or if you say you're going to do it and you don't do it, you're blah, blah, blah. So did you find the three of you complimented each other then really well? And that no, not at all. It was the opposite. They fought like cats and dogs, candidly. They were like two stepbrothers going at it. And I was like the middle child, 
you know, so as it was, it, you know, so instead of flying formation and complimenting each other, it was kind of like, we're all pushing at what we wanted. So what was the glue that kept you guys together then? Um, what was the glue that kept us together? Um, well, I'll say that because we got sick of each other, just like David and Pat were sick of each other. And by the way, if you guys can't tell, I am being 100% candid on all of this. I just say what's on my mind. So, so it was, um, Hey, let's, let's get, we've, we've done these cool adventures and we've had a lot of fun together, but let's, um, let's let's each bring a guest and we went and climbed mount whitney the top tallest mountain in uh, continental united states so so we each brought a guest and we went on that trip and then we went on a few other trips where others wanted to go and people would tell us wow you guys have something really cool that you have going and we had and and we had um put together a lot of the tools that we have within go abundance the one sheet, the life happiness index. Um, we had, they had different names, but we had already started those things. And this was, um, 2008, 2009. And then we, we became an actual company in 2013 when, when we did our first actual event. So, so it, we, we didn't do it to start something big. I didn't look at it as a profit center. And now, um, it, it pays the bills without all the other investing and stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that how everything starts though? Things that are really, really good start with intentions and they take a trajectory that you would never have thought, you know, they just started being like a small mastermind. There's three guys and it's four guys, maybe it's six guys. And then over time, you know, it sounds like you didn't think it would ever get this big, but you just kind of naturally went in the direction that it was going in and then just flowed into it from there. So I'm thankful. I'm a recipient of it. <laughs> yeah. I need to give my partners a lot of props. They're, they're two amazing individuals that, um, we, we know each other, we like each other and we trust each other. And I talk about how David and Pat were at the time. I want to really give them props because they've worked so hard on themselves. Um, on, on, on their personalities and their, and their um, um, traits that didn't serve them well. And me too. And, and that's one thing we've all done. And, and it's a really good thing for you and your listeners. Um, you can't be the person that, capable of doing amazing things without doing a lot of inner work on yourself. It, it, it's just not going to happen. So. I agree. I agree. I agree a lot. And Emerge has been a really good program for that. There's a lot of challenge in there. And one thing that I have found being part of that group is everybody is authentic. They're real and they challenge you to grow as an individual. And, and you're not on that alone either. And there's lots of resources there. Um, and everybody that I've met so far embodies the the saying, know thyself, you know, get to know who you are and, and then throw yourself out there to your fullest potential and, you know, and no boundaries. That's the other thing I love about the group that people who are there and they'll call you out if they see it too. You know, if there's, if you put a limiter on yourself, boy, forget it. You'll, you'll have that torn down in no amount of time. If you're real, somebody will find that out of you and say, no, you know what? You want to go do that? Yeah, go do that. You can do that. And if you're not sure how, there are 10 other people you can reach out to that will help you make the connections in order to get that done. So it's uh, it's been very beneficial. That's the accountability part we were talking about. And yeah, and the uh, authentic and the... Uh, um, you know, just throwing your cards on the table of this is who I am. This is what I'm about. That's the beauty of, of what we created. And one other thing I'd like to say that sets us apart from most masterminds is that thought process of it's not what you make, um, but what you do with what you make that makes a difference. And I, and I think, you know, we, everybody that's been around our world has seen just that exp exponential growth in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first time I was 
exposed to GoBundance, and I didn't even realize what it was, was somebody told me to read the book Tribe of Millionaires. And I got it. And I read it and I think in two days, I couldn't put it down. It was either two or three days. And I got down the book and I remember saying to myself, do people like this really exist? And within a few months, that question that I put out into the universe was answered when I found Emerge. And then when I realized when I got into Emerge, I was like, oh my gosh, people like this really do exist. You know, there are people who are authentic. There are people who are accountable. They, the multiplier effect, I've seen that in action. That was something talked about in the book as well. While we're talking about a book, books, what made you decide to write the book with Pat, the Quitter's Manifesto? How did that come about? It was just, you know how you, hey, I got an idea. Let's, let's see if it lands anywhere. And Pat called me and said, Tim, you are the original quitter and I followed your footsteps and uh, I think we should write a book about it. So, so yeah. And, and uh, I kind of, when he said that, it was kind of like, dude, I'm not working. I don't want to do anything. And, uh, and then I thought about it and I thought I have a lot of material um, just the, in the coaching and all the work I had done that that all I need to do is just pull it up and uh, and we can make a book out of it. So so we did. Um, and and I'm really proud of the book. I'm really um, I'm proud of both of those books. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they're really, really good. You know, think about just the if doing individual coaching, you reach one person or maybe if you put 10 in a group you reach 10 people but think about your book and i didn't look on amazon but i don't know how many copies are, are floating around out there I, I don't know i haven't looked but but think of how many people that you were able to take your message to and multiply and reach them with your story and your encouragement and pat's uh encouragement as well so uh and i think it'll stand this test of time you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, if, if, if somebody's, um, you know, if you remember in the book there, there's the soul sucking meter. Um, yeah, there's the use by day. I sent you my answers. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I think, I think the concepts are, you know, are everlasting. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So in the book, I, and I wanted to ask you in the book, you talk about the concept of aggressive patience and I love the combination of those words because it's not something that you would normally put together, right? Aggressive patience. If you think of both of those words individually, um, how, where did the phrase come from and could you like, how did that play out in your own life? Cause I know that I, phrase I'd came like up to in put it into your life. Actually, it, what we, <laughs> this, we is were talking, this is <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, because we were talking about you investing and, and look at what I was telling you only do great deals. Don't do deals just to do a deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's yep. aggressive. That's being aggressively patient. I told you to look at, 100 to 200 deals to find one yes. that's aggressively patient most and 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 like i'd i'd coach real estate students and say tim i want to buy five homes this year and in a declining market like where we are now i'd say why don't you buy one or two and let's make damn sure you buy them right or don't buy them. Mm -hmm. yeah right? yeah that's, that was a yeah that was the best advice yeah, yeah, actually, and that's it, being aggressively patient. It's it's okay. it's you look for you look for whatever it is you're doing. You look for the best, and 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 what's that ten out of ten, and what's seven and a half out of ten, and anything short of that, you're being too um, impatient. You, mm -hmm. you you only want the best, um, you know what whatever outcome you're looking for. And I'll give you another good example of aggressively patient was me taking the time to for the gestation period for what's next for me. 
And my mom would say, Timothy, this walking in the woods phase. I say, Mama, I'm loving that. I'm having so much fun. I have no idea what's next, but I know there's something out there. That's being aggressively patient. And by the way, yeah. I'm very unique that way. And I, and I and I think there's some concepts that I've just naturally my intuition is I'm left-handed. I'm 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 just not normal, and I love it. And, uh, and I'll give you another good example of this is everybody feels nobody can do it like me. I, 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 if, I, if I try to delegate it out, it never does it right. So I got to do everything. I got rid of that freaking, that terrible mindset from the get. When I sold real estate, I, I had assistance, for, you know, I looked at what do I want to do? And that's all I want to do. And everything else I want to delegate it out. And then I trained my people really well. I told them how much it matters. I paid them really well. I just, I just went out of my way to set the table to where I'm lazy. I don't want to work. I want somebody else to do all the work. I want, I want to be a freaking doctor going back to selling real estate. I show up. I say, where does it hurt? All right, let me write your prescription. And then everything before, everything after, I don't do jack. You know, that. Yeah. Well, you had to put all those systems in place. So you did do something, but I understand where you're coming from that you found and leveraged people who you needed to do something that did it better than you. And you just trained them how to do it. And probably at one point you did do it very well, but you realized, wait a minute, I don't want to do that thing. I can just train somebody to do that for me and then put that system in place. I wanted to spend all my time with my kids. I wanted to coach Little League. I wanted to never miss a parent teacher conference. I wanted to do all the things that make an amazing life. And I didn't, I early on, I didn't want to work with buyers because it took time. I'd have to show it to them. Then they'd want to show somebody else, blah, 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 you know. And I, I just looked at how can I be as efficient as possible? So all I did at the end was I prospected, I listed homes, and I'd show the, the, um, the as soon as I got the contract signed, I'd show them my team and say, hey, take a good look at them because you won't see me again. Here's my cell phone. Call me if you need me. You never will. They'll take such good care of you. You're going to forget I even exist. Um, Tim, we hired you. I know. I'm a really good salesman. You, you signed the contract, didn't you? Um, but, 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 I, but what I'm really good at is having an amazing team that's very caring. Now, let's go over the things that matter the most to you. Nobody's going to show up before noon. You got to be in Cleveland within two months. We got to get at least this much. All the things I'd write it down. I'd go to my team and I'd say, this is what's most important to them. And I kind of would just hand it off and then um, went, went back and prospected or listed another home or spent time with my family. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I mean, and I know there's probably people listening who want to recapture that and say, you know, like I want to get to that point where I'm just going to quit my W2. What I love about the book and just going back to the book is that just like you just explained how you had your team, they knew exactly what they needed to do. Your book is pretty much written the same way. And, and, but here's the difference versus a lot of self-help books. And this is the one thing that I, I walked away with it. A lot of books or courses or even other people that you would listen to, they tell you to do this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. You do those things, you do them in those order and in this order, and that's what you're supposed to do. What I enjoyed about the book was it was sort of a prescription, but it wasn't. It got one layer deeper why are you leaving your job? What are you looking for? These are the people, think about the people that you're putting in place. So now I can see the way you put systems into practice in your, in, in when you were selling real estate, I can now see that in the book, like how you just built it in such a way that whoever reads it can say, okay, I can walk away with a plan, but Tim didn't tell me what the plan was. Tim gave me the tools that I needed to develop the plan. Exactly. Cause everybody's different. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what sets it apart from a lot of either courses or masterminds or people that just say, this is the way it's supposed to be done. You do it X, Y, and Z, but the way you have it written, it is you, and even though it's a small book, it's not, um, it's deceiving because every page is so well written 
that it's clear, concise, with no fluff. So you get done a chapter or a section and you can execute. That was the other thing. You can take action on what it is that you read. So I was going to ask you, what part of real estate what, were you in the zone? Like, what was the part you enjoyed the most? Um, well, now don't work and get, get checks. Um, just saying. Um, but, but, uh, yeah, just, just making things happen. And, and yeah, I, I think, um, I think that was it. And there were, and I, and I enjoyed every part when I first started and I took buyers out and I found the home and then I, I saw it on tour and then brought them over and then hand them the keys. Are you kidding me? But it was very, very inefficient. I want to spend time with my family. So, so then I became a listing agent. Then I had my Tim is now an investor plan and I no longer listed and sold and I only invested. Then was the walk, you know, so there was, so I've, I've, I've experienced multiple incarnations and I want to talk about a really important piece in all of this. Let's say it's three to five years from now and you find your next incarnation, Sue, and you're rocking and rolling. And then you're not, you just look up and you're not in a place where you should be. And this happened to me about 2011, right? No, it was 2012. Cause we had just gotten our go abundance cards and we were at an event. I was with David and Pat and we did our, we were doing our one sheets and I was, I probably made 300, 400, the previous year. And I'd quit that um, coaching real estate investors. And I'd also kind of quit, um, how can I put it? Um, minding my garden. I had, I had these uh, bigger commercial deals and the strip center I talked about used to bring in like 5,000 a month. And all of a sudden it was only bringing in 2,000. And I just, I just wasn't making this much. So I did my one sheet with them and they go, Tim, what the heck? You're barely breaking even dude. And these are my accountability partners, my, my abundance partners. And they're like, what is going on with you? You're, you've got, you backslid. You're, you're barely breaking even here. Are you going to list and sell real estate? Are you going to um, do flippers? What are you going to do, Tim road? And I, and I didn't want to, uh, um, you know, my buddies were trying to look out for me and do what's best. And I wasn't, I ain't doing nothing. But I was just trying to say, how did you feel when they did that? I didn't like it at all. And, and it was, uh, probably my parents tell me, Tim, you got to get better grades in school. You got to learn those in or the, um, periodic tables. You got to learn those memorize that seven. And I'm like, what the hell do I need them? Do you go back to like eight year old Tim at that time when they were like, yeah, I did. And, and then when I wasn't with them, I thought it through and I go, dude, let's, let's, let's do the, let's do the math here. They're absolutely right. Something needs to change. Are you going to keep working? Are you going to go list and sell? Absolutely not. Are you going to flip homes? Absolutely not. How are you going to solve this? And this is the point I said, I know. I just bought an apartment complex with Andrew Cushman. He was my best student when I coached real estate investors. He was amazing. He's the horse I need. I'm, we're just going to ride his uh, ride. Andrew, um, David can qualify for all the loans. Pat and I know a gazillion people who know us, like us, and trust us. We can raise a, a bunch of money. So, so we started something called DAP, David, Andrew, Pat, and Tim. And that was my answer. And that's my point is, is um, sometimes you we need to pull out our magician's wand and think about, um, you know, I love options. Are you going to list and sell? No. Are you going to flip? No. What are you going to do? I'm going to have Andrew do all the work. I, I, I took it a step deeper and we've done 20 apartment complexes since. It's, it's been a $5 million so far. And, and, you know, so I meet with him and David and Pat eh, once a quarter, we get on a call and he just gives us an update and everything's going and what's going on with all the deals and where are we going? What kind of team do we have now? And he is so amazing. So oh, I love the story. I yeah, hope it inspires somebody. I want to make sure we got that in. The book, Who Not How, Who Not How.
You know, who do you know? And and think about what I did. I went back to an uh, earlier piece of my career and pulled somebody from there who was already do something, just started it himself. He had other partners he's going to work with. I said, nah, that ain't happening. Boom, you're working with us. <laughs> I'm taking you. You're mine, man. <laughs> I'm not going to let you have it and let you go anywhere else. Of course. And and it was best for Andrew. It, you know what I mean? It was best for the universe. It was, it was. But you knew him too, which was awesome as well. You know, you bet. And, and I hope like I'm catching the subtle part of your story and that is building authentic relationships, you know, getting to know the people that you're working with and that, that part of your story I wanted to pull out. The other that is I've noticed in the couple anecdotes that you've shared, one of the things that you do really well is that you pause, mm -hmm. you stop doing something and then you do like, you don't do anything else. So example, you stopped at 40 and then you went out in the woods. But while you're out in the woods, your brain has a chance to catch up almost hmm. to because I suspect and correctly, if I'm wrong, prior to age 40, you worked and you got people to work for you. And even though maybe physically you're not working, somebody who runs other people, you're still working. You're still yeah. managing them in some capacity. It's not like you're not doing anything at all. You're still doing something. So my guess is that you were still doing something and active too and f fixing and flipping. You know, you have to really trust your flippers. You still have to go check things. I mean, there's still stuff you have to do, right? So when you, when you retired, you paused and then you had time to think. When the guys looked at your one sheet, go to that moment. And they're telling you what you don't want to hear. Like, dude, you're running out of money, right? <laughs> you went back and you paused and you reflected yeah. and, and you thought. And, and maybe there's, there's, you know, there's a clock and there's times like in 2009, it was one o'clock. It was time to start uh, investing. And now we're at about 1130 or maybe it's past, um, you know, it's past 12. Um, but there's a time to, to be aggressive and there's times to observe. And I think that's, a you know, it's, it's just, it's just the way of the world. It's just the way it, sh it is. And, and I see so many, especially right now, um, I want to be, you know, I want to be financially th free in three years. And especially right now, perhaps the, the, that pause should be learning everything about the game uh, and, and trying deals on. Well, what if I would have bought this? What would have happened? How would this have gone? If I would have flipped this, how, did they make money? What happened? And I remember when I first started, um, when I first started selling real estate, I had to learn all about lending, all about title all about termite and, and roof inspections and home inspections and, and contracts and negotiation. And, and, and so um, I, I, I think this is really important to say also, um, I never went to college, but I've spent, and I wish I would have kept track, but I've spent somewhere between, and I'll go light at 250,000, but it's closer to probably 750,000. It might even be a million on all the coachings and all the classes. And I went through Tony Robbins life mastery. I went through Dale Carnegie. I took Toastmasters. I, I went and saw Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, Wayne Dyer, all the old greats back in the day. And, and I have two coaches right now. So that's a huge piece of, of, um, lifelong learning. And let me give you the best one I ever did. Um, how did I meet Pat Hyben and David Osborne? I was, I was in Manteca where I used to live and I was looking at how am I going to sell these 17 properties with 52 tenants and what's the tax implication? And there was a guy, uh, I can't even remember his name, but he was the, the tax guy to, to, you know, make sure you do all this right and don't leave money on the table. So I went to see that guy and it was in Chicago and I paid $3,000 and that $3,000 you know, will be multi, multi millions over time because I met Pat and Dave. 
And, and, and I never, you never know, you know, what's the, what's that one thing that you did that made all the difference? That one thing. I love it. You know what I, I would say is, uh, we didn't talk about One Life Fully Lived. It's a nonprofit that I, that I started back in the day and was very, very, it was my one thing. It really was. I, I cared about GoBenants. I love GoBenants, but One Life Fully Lived was my heart. It was my baby. And I wanted to change education. And I think our education system is screwed. I think they're totally on the right, wrong uh, track. And we talked about uh, Tribe of Millionaires. We talked about Quitters Manifesto. I also created the One Life Roadmap, which is the basic, um, it's life's basics, um, uh, vision, finances, um, relationships, and wellness. It's what they should be teaching in school. So it was so important to me. And uh, this last year I gave it up and uh, we changed a lot of lives. There's a lot of people who are glad we did it. But um, in my mind, it, it should be in every freaking school. So, and, and not everybody should go get a freaking master's and have a uh, about a, a bunch of debt. So, yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Well, I did look at the curriculum and I thought it was phenomenal. And one of the things my last year teaching, I taught COVID year, which was 2020, 2021. I loved teaching juniors and seniors. And what I did that year was I had 52 students. I taught them how to, well, I gave them an assignment. They had to go find a house on Zillow. They had to go make up a job that they wanted. They had to research how much they were going to get paid. They needed to go buy a car. And I told them what the interest rate was. They were putting $1,000 down. They're going to have payments. And then they needed to calculate their student debt. On top of it, um, they had to calculate their mortgage payment by hand, which I, and I made them prove and show me the formula. And honestly, for those of you out there that are listening, it's just a formula. <laughs> That's all it is to calculate a mortgage. It's just a formula. Uh, so they, they did that. All that to say the feedback that I got, because part of the project was to write a reflection at the end, was to tell me what did you think of this project and what did you get out of that? Well, I had about 52 kids come back and tell me I didn't learn anything in high school, but this lesson that I did is one of the few things I'm going to walk out of here with that I will use after I graduate. That's beautiful. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. I, and, you know, it was one of those things that you wish you saw more of the practical application to teach kids. Like I had kids didn't know how to balance a checkbook. You know, they didn't know anything about buying a house. They didn't know anything about doing their taxes. And I thought, wow, how scary is this? But um, yeah, it's sad. And nobody in their world talks about it with them. Right. And that's the other thing. You know, how often do people, like if you're not in the real estate space, how often does somebody go to buy a house? I mean, I, I moved twice. Like I got, but I, my parents didn't bring me into the process of buying a house. I used to do that. Like if, 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 um, some, some, uh, kids would want to sit at the table and parents, Oh no, the parents are talking. No, 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 no. Let them sit right here. This is a listing agreement. This is, you know? Yeah. 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 And kids want to learn. I really truly think deep down that a lot of the students I came across did want to learn, the but you know what, Tim, I think the other thing too, there are pockets of education out there that would widely um, embrace one life fully lived. And, um, you know, I'm thinking of the homeschool arena. Right, right, right. Definitely, you know, definitely be there. And there's other avenues, like not just the public school system. Right. Also for um, the prison system, the sober community, they love them because especially sober, you you're clean, you're sober for once you're thinking, you know, kind of like what's next. And our one life roadmap is just, it's just ideal for, um, somebody who's willing to do the work. Now, I, now this is a trick question a little bit because I've been challenged that you have to change it around to say, what would your 80 year old self tell, come back and tell your present self? I, I, especially, now I think I get it. But if you remember me saying what used to go through my mind back when I was in my thirties 
was, and I'll just say it, you suck. Show me something. You haven't done anything. Come on, get off your butt. Make something happen. It was just this horrible self-talk. Um, and now my self-talk is, I freaking love you, man. I, I, yeah, seriously. I, um, it's it's uh, because I am authentic. And I, and I, you know, I, I tr try to show up and be the best I can be, but, um, and I did then, but I just, I just have lived a lot and see that that served me well at the time, but, but this, um, <clears throat> just enjoying and, and enjoying myself and those around me, um, rather than just just be and this is more for the guys you know just being a doer and just just having to um to win all the time and that's where i was at the time and over time i've learned it's more about um relationships and just just holding up my end so rather than winning the race so just <laughs> one thing, it's not just the guys that are doers. There are those of us who are female type A personalities that are driven, driven, driven. We have to go get it done. I was thinking as I said that, I said, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's a different personality and it's, it's, you know, male or female. It's, it's a type A. Yeah. Yeah, you tend to see it more in guys, though. You know what? I think of the ladies that are in GoBundance because we have a women's tribe. Um, they, you know, they kick, they get crap done. You know, there's a whole tribe of women there that are type A personality and they get crap done, right? <laughs> so I would think they would, you know, they fall under there too. You know, something you said about your their, your 35 year old talk to yourself. You know that you're, you know, you're you're horrible. You you know that that horrible not your horrible but that horrible self-talk was there a positive that came out of it like did that propel you to achieve it, it, oh it was great it was uh in my mind uh, if you're self-employed you have to have a, a mean boss and there's another word for it but i'm i'm not gonna say it um but it was who you know so so there's a movie called inside out I don't know if you remember that. It was a Pixar movie. And and there was all the characters inside our dome. And in my mind, there was the mean boss and the scared kid. And every day there was a conflict. I was supposed to pos prospect one to three hours a day. And the scared kid said, I just don't feel like it. And I'm not going to. And the mean boss said, get your get on the phone, shut up, yeah. you're doing this. And then I, and I don't want to, I don't want, you know what I mean? This, this little conversation. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd get on the phones and I'd freaking get a listing out of it. And I'd go, see? So yes, it, <laughs> it, it helped me to do the things I didn't want to do. And, and, you know, so, so there's this, what I found over time is there's this beautiful place um, combining your head, ego, and your heart and when you're in that place and the heart is leading more than your head you're in this amazing place where where you can come up with amazing things like andrew cushman being the next thing and if i was just in ego i couldn't do it if i you know what i mean or a head space if i was in heart i wouldn't do it but but i think at some point uh, and maybe it was because of all the time in the boonies and just spending a lot of time um, contemplating stuff, getting my heart rate elevated. And I hope whoever's listening to this, I hope you get time with yourself like that. Maybe it's meditation, maybe it's yoga, but there's this, and for me, it's climbing up a mountain with my heart rate elevated. And it just, I just, I'm just thinking about all the things mm -hmm that are top of mind and should be so I think it's it's that adrenaline rush isn't it I think so your, your brain just goes into that higher level of thought and to uh, out of that you were talking about how you're now like you you've got the ego and then connected to the heart now more in the heart and you mentioned that spending the time in the woods and getting alone made helped you make more of that connection going from one to the other was there anything else like did go abundance or being around the guys and what you guys had developed into like go abundance did that help too 
I think so, but um, I, I'd like to um, say somebody else. Uh, uh, there's a lady named Janai Lane, J E N A I Lane, and she has a course called Spirit Led Instead. And it's all about tapping into your inner wisdom and, and uh, you know, just, just um, tapping into spirituality. And um, I, I coached with her for a number of years. Mike McCarthy's coached with her for almost 20 years now. So, uh, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I coached with her. And I haven't coached with her in a while. And I'm thinking maybe I should. But, um, yeah, I coached with her for like six or seven years. At the end of the day, Tim, I am thankful I'm thankful oh, for all the people that have taken the time to have conversations with me. I'm thankful for you. We covered a lot of ground. Is there anything else that you can think of that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, I just, I just like to leave it with this is, um, how, and, and I've talked to you about this is, is, um, don't try to do too much. And, and sometimes it just seems like we got to get there right away. And, and we, and we're a little ADD and we, we've got to have multiple streams of income. And to me, it's like, let the game come to you. Um, and there's a great saying, I think it was Gary Keller. You get done and who knows if it's somebody before them, but, um, you get, you get less done in a year than you think, but more done in five years than you and the other, and and the other piece i want to add to that and that's my um, thought process is it's really hard to roll a wheelbarrow up a hill it's super hard to roll three two three but then you get this squirrel and you want four and five you can't do it one and two are gonna go by the wayside so, so it's really important and go back to when I sold real estate, people were always get trying to get, you're a great salesman. Come sell for me. Come do this. I list and sell real estate. It is what I do. I use this to make my money for my rentals. It was a simple plan and I freaking executed it. And I wish that for all of you just have a simple plan and execute it daily. Boom. I love it. I remember when you told me that the first time to let the game come to me because I, uh, and, and actually this is a beautiful way to end our time together, coming back around. Remember what I started with where I really wanted you on because you have a way of just bringing depth to simplicity. Hmm. And so again, in what you're leaving us with, just the simple things, let the game come to you. Um, at the end of the day, Tim, I am thankful. I'm thankful oh, for you. all the people that have taken the time to have conversations with me. I'm thankful for you. Hey, it's Tim, been a pleasure. Thank it you, has son. been. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you so much, Tim. Thanks. Oh, I appreciate it. Bye-bye, Sue. Thank you. All the best to all you listeners. And yeah, thank you, Sue. I want to thank you for watching or listening to my podcast. I value your time with me because I realize you could be listening to someone else right now. And I also want you to know that I now offer coaching and consulting. So if you're thinking about creating a course, but not sure how to structure it, or you have a small step you need to take to lead to a big result, but you're not sure what the in-between looks like, check out my website at www.suesaller.com for more information and to request a free consultation. Remember, life doesn't get better by chance. It gets better by choice. Take small steps and make today awesome, friends. God bless.